You are a Locked On Braves postcast, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, your team every day. Hello once again and welcome into the Braves postcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Grant McCauley and Jake Mastriani with you in what is going to be, I'm sure, a memorable weekend one way or another for the Atlanta Braves. A weekend so big, it's going to get pushed all the way into Monday as they close out the regular season and look to do so by punching their ticket to October. And they took another step towards doing just that with a victory over the Kansas City Royals thanks to a masterful performance by Max Fried and a timely home run from his battery mate Sean Murphy that added up to a 2 nothing win. We're going to talk all about it. We'll size up the wild card. And we'll get you set for Saturday with the return of another Braves All-Star slated to start that game. Before we get started with all of that, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to Locked On Sports Atlanta on YouTube. Subscribe to Locked On Braves wherever you get your podcasts. And today's episode is brought to you by Booking.com. Booking.com, Booking. Yeah, the right stay can make you a fan of any city, even your rivals. Book today on Booking.com, the official accommodation partner of MLB. Get the Booking.com app today. Well, Jake, we knew as the Braves were, no pun intended, booking their plans for this final weekend, there were still quite a few details to be figured out. In fact, one of the only things we knew heading into the series against the Kansas City Royals, another playoff hopeful club, is that Max Fried was going to start on Friday. And when Max Fried took the ball and went out there, you didn't know how things were going to go and you don't know what the future holds. And you know he has been a big game pitcher for the Braves in the past. And I would say that Max Fried is uh, what I like to call maximum freed on this night he was absolutely in control and gave the Braves the exact kind of performance they needed to start this series off on the right foot this gave me vibes of game six of the world series it just it was locked in it felt like nobody was going to touch him and nearly nobody did I, I I know he hates it I wish he would have gotten that final out but it was also cool to see him get that you know standing ovation coming off the mound and what could be his final time pitching in a Braves uniform, but in the biggest game, and we're going to say that for every game the rest of the year, Max Reed delivered for the Atlanta Braves when they needed him to. And he's done it before you mentioned that game six. It also felt like another game six where a lefty was out there and decided no one was going to touch him. That, of course, that Tom Glavin performance in 1995. The stake's not as high, but every one of these wins, as we've talked about for weeks now, is a must-win situation for the Atlanta Braves. They cannot afford too many missteps, if any missteps, if they want to find their way into October in this crazy wild card race that they find themselves tangled up in with the New York Mets, with the Arizona Diamondbacks as well. We'll get into all of that stuff later, but I think Max Fried, in being the guy that he is, being the pitcher that he has been, the performer that he's been, he knew all of these factors, but he was able to go out there, quiet down that noise, and as he talked about in the post game, he just synced up everything, his thoughts and the mentality, the approach and the physical, everything was all locked up for him. In, in or in lockstep for him, I should say. And he looked absolutely terrific. It's as good as Max Fried has ever looked, that's for sure. It was. And look, he he can get like that. And you know, every pitcher is going to go into a game and they're going to say that they're they're locked in and focused, but it just it felt like one of those times. And you know, we've seen it from Max before where he just he knows what he wants to throw. He has a good game plan. He's able to execute it. And look, we've always talked about it. Max Fried's not that guy that's going to overpower you, but when he has the command with all of those pitches that he throws, he's one of the best pitchers in baseball. I'd put him easily in the top 10 uh, when he's got his command working like he does tonight. I think he's that good with all the stuff that he has. And it's just that mentality too. I mean, Max Fried has, has given everything to this Braves team. And again, not knowing what the future holds, not knowing if this is going to be his last start in a Braves uniform, not even really thinking about past this year, but this year too. I mean, the Braves season is on the line and he went out there with that bulldog mentality and gave the Braves just a a tremendous performance. Again, it's what we have come to get used to and expect from Max Fried. Again, I I talked about it not too long ago. I I think he's somewhat underappreciated and I think Braves fans really appreciate him, but I, I don't know that some people appreciate him enough for just how great he has been in his time in a Braves uniform because he has given this franchise a lot. Hopefully he has a lot more left to give them. Yeah, absolutely. They'd love to have him get quite a few more opportunities to pitch here in 2024. Max Fried said as much in his postgame comments, and the Braves obviously would love that to be the script for how their month of October is going to go. But in order for all of that to happen, they need to take care of things here in the month of September before they get here. Sean Murphy had himself a moment, which are definitely fewer and further between his two-run homer and the fourth inning, got the Braves on the board. They got a third run, which was 
I think more entertaining than anything, but turned out to be pretty important when it came to giving Max Fried a little more leeway, a little bit more leash in the ninth inning to try to close out the complete game. He wasn't able to finish it off, but the, the Marcelo Zuna stolen base, we'll get to a little bit later. But for Sean Murphy, that had to feel awfully good because he was the guy that had the front row seat and get to watch it you know, closer and, and more intricately than any of us because he was the battery mate for Max Fried on this night. I think he had to know as well. Max is locked in. We got to get this offense rolling. And I was a little surprised to see that Sean Murphy got the start. We know that Travis Starno usually catches Max Freed, and Max Freed feels very comfortable with him. And both catchers have been struggling offensively for quite some time now. So, uh, again, I was a little surprised to see Murphy get the start, but certainly glad that he did, and he got that big hit. Look, you know, there's no – no disguising it. It's been a tough year for Sean Murphy. I mean, you get injured on day one, you're out for two months, you're, you're struggling coming back to find your footing. And one thing we know is that he calls a great game. And I, I felt like he did that tonight. I know Max kind of calls his own pitches every now and then, but certainly Sean Murphy has a hand in that. Uh, but coming up with a big home run there on a night where it looked like from the beginning runs were going to be hard to come by without that wind that was blowing in. You, you knew there weren't a lot of hits in this game by either team. And so you thought it might take just whoever gets that blast through the wind and Luckily, Sean Murphy was able to hit a low line drive that just got over the fence in left field. But a huge moment for him, like you said, it's been a really rough season for Sean Murphy. So for him to be able to have a moment like that to help this team out has to feel huge. Definitely. Yeah, he didn't have to hit it very high. He just had to hit it very far. And Sean Murphy did that with that liner into the visitors' bullpen to get the Braves on the board. His 10th home run of the season, second on an 0-2 count. I had to go back and look at it because you know Sean has had a lot of struggles this year. Strikeouts have piled up on him, hitting under 200 coming into the day. And it came in a month of September in which he entered the day with the hits being you know, few and far between, might be putting it nicely. He was 3-for-38 in September in 11 games prior to this one. That's an 0-79 average if you're scoring at home. But uh, sometimes it's just about being the right guy at the right time, and Sean Murphy certainly was for the Braves in the fourth inning there. Now, as we've talked about, the Braves, they need every win they can get. Freed, the only starter named coming into the Kansas City Royals series, but we now know the return of Ronaldo Lopez is looming on Saturday. We'll get into that a little bit later in the show, but among the things that the Braves were trying to figure out is how do we deploy our starting rotation? Ronaldo was kind of the wild card in it. Chris Sale, the Braves have basically said if they get into an elimination situation, Sale's going to be the guy who gets the ball. I don't know what that means in terms of what the weekend looks like, if it means you know Monday's doubleheader, or if they're able to just keep winning and winning and winning, are you just saving them for the wild card round? I don't know. Maybe we can talk about that later as well. But Atlanta was seeking to move into a tie for a wild card spot and pending the outcome of the other action and all those other moving parts, Jake, the Braves did their part. Now they're going to hope they can get a little bit of help from the Milwaukee Brewers and some help from the wild card compatriots in San Diego. You know, the the one of the things we're getting this those two games against the Mets moved to Monday is that the Braves do control their destiny through the rest of the season. Now, that wasn't necessarily the case going into New York unless they swept that series. But now you kind of do. And so you kind of had that in your back pocket come Monday. But certainly the Braves want to try to win all of these games against Kansas City and try to avoid Monday if possible or at least avoid having to play of both of them, but it obviously would take some help from other teams for that to happen. But as we have said coming into this week, as we've said, it feels like for weeks now, you just got to go out there and win. You got the opportunity in front of you. You just have to go out there and get it done. And they have, they did in the first game against the Mets. They come out here on Friday and, and get it done. So, I mean, just focus on what you have to do. And like I said, kind of with that Met series getting, getting moved, you know, you have that if you, if you need to get there and you still control your destiny through that, but yeah. it's, you know, it's that old cliche mentality. It really is just one game at a time right now. And you got to go out and win a game every day. That's all it is. It may be boring. It may be cliche, but that's kind of where the Braves find themselves. It's not going to do them any good to look ahead to, you know, big picture stuff at this point. And obviously there's not much time left at this point either. So maybe that makes it just that much more simple or simplifies their thought process of, Hey, we've got to win today, get to tomorrow, and then we'll figure it out. But going day-to-day -day with your starting pitchers just kind of lets you know they're trying to figure out the best way to get through this, what, it's five games in four days, now down to four games in three days if they play both games with that doubleheader. And there are scenarios, which we can get into later, in which maybe they don't have to play that second game and would be favorable for the Braves. And we'll get into all of that a little bit later. But uh, bottom line is, on a night where your offense wasn't doing a whole lot, it did just enough, and it doesn't matter when your starters is locked in as Max Fried was over eight and two thirds innings. And for Rysel Iglesias, I got to say, pretty easy day at the office for him. He got up and threw just in case, and he only had to throw one pitch to get himself and the Braves into the win column 
over the Kansas City Royals by a 3 nothing score. we got a lot more to talk about on this edition of the Braves Postcast. We'll get into the Max Fried performance some more, some fun things from the Braves offense, including the Murphy homer, and one of the most improbable stolen bases of the year also occurred in the bottom of the eighth inning. We will get to that. We'll talk about the wild card and get you set up for Saturday. All of that is ahead as the Braves Postcast continues. With Robinhood Gold, you don't need a silver spoon to eat up the financial favors of the 1%. Robinhood Gold allows others to get the rates and perks usually reserved for high society. Now, the resourceful individual with Robinhood Gold can earn the very liberal rate of 4.5 APY on uninvested cash, receive unlimited 1% deposit bonuses, and be rewarded with a handsome 3% retirement boost on an IRA account. Robinhood Gold provides the privileges of high net worth for any net worth. These generous benefits are now available for only $5 a month. The new gold standard is here with Robinhood Gold. Sign up at Robinhood.com slash gold. Terms apply for product-specific disclosures. Visit Robinhood.com slash gold. Investing involves risk. Rate may change. Gold membership is offered by Robinhood Gold, LLC. Let's jump into the line score and box score from this game. A good one for the Braves, a fast one at that. An hour and 59 minutes as the Braves beat the, Ro- the Royals by a 3 nothing score. Atlanta now 87 and 71. Three runs, four hits, no errors. And for the Braves, six men left on base. For the Royals, they were shut out on three hits, committed a couple of errors. They left four men on base in Kansas City, now 85 and 75 on the season. Braves get that eight and two thirds innings performance from Max Fried who tossed scoreless ball on just three hits, two walks, and nine strikeouts to improve to 11-10 and on the year. And Brady Singer takes the loss. He pitched well, though, gave up to Sean Murphy, Homer, and little else. Two runs across six innings for him. He drops to 9-13. and The save goes to Iglesias, his 33rd of the year, and maybe his easiest of the season as well. Uh, As you look at what Max Fried was able to do in this game, we talked a lot about it. When you are going into a situation, Jake, where – you need as much as you can get out of your starting rotation. You've got your all-hands-on-deck mentality that Brian Snitker has been talking about the last few days and really tracking back to before the Mets series got started. But at this point, after the two days of worth of a reset thanks to the rain, Snit also said prior to the game, look, we'll go to the bullpen, and some of these guys, they might throw all four days heading into the end of the season. And then you get Max Fried to go out and do what he did tonight. That goes a long way towards helping out with the availability of some of your key relievers and really all your relievers heading over this next three days to close out the year. Yeah. I mean, you did have the two off days, so that obviously gives you, you know, a little bit extra rest for some of these bullpen guys too, but you're also having to play a lot of games in a, in a few days here, and you're likely going to need those guys and just about all of them. So anytime you can have a game like this and, you know, Joe did get up in this one, Iglesias did get up and come through, come in and throw one pitch, but all those guys have to be ready every single game and especially those guys and you know tight situations we know this Braves offense look I would love for them to come out and put up five six seven runs every game but they played in a lot of tight games this year and you have to be ready to to call on those guys when needed because you just can't count on this offense to put up all those runs that that we're used to seeing last year so again to to be able to have Max Freed go into this game like I said I wish you could have got the one more out for the complete game but for the most part he did what he needed to do. He went out and delivered and saved that bullpen where Iglesias, who's always super efficient, came in and had the most efficient outing in just yeah. one pitch. Yeah, Brian Snooker was joking before the game that Rysel Iglesias would, if he had it his way, he'd pitch in all five of these games if he's needed. He's just one of those guys that wants to take the ball. That's not a, There's no shortage of those guys out there. But at this point, another thing you know that was uh, discussed is the fact that, look, everybody's feeling the long season at this point. Everybody's sore. Everybody's got aches and pains. Everybody's dealing with it. But everyone also knows what's on the line here, so they all want to be a part of being in the lineup or on the mound or wherever they need to be to help this club out here down the stretch. Uh, We didn't talk about it a ton, but I guess it's worth getting into here a little bit. And what could be his final start in a Braves uniform, Max Fried's performance, you could tell it meant a lot to him as well. He got that incredible ovation when he left. Everybody wishes that he could have gotten that final out to close out that shutout. But Jake, as final chapters go, if this is one of them or one of the final stars that we see, because the future is unknown with Max walking into free agency whenever the Braves are done this year, this is the kind of lasting memory that I think will mean a lot to him and should mean a lot to Braves fans. 
Yeah, because you know, even if the Braves do make the postseason, there's no guarantee that they get to come back home and, and play again. Because if they do make it, they're going to be on the road uh, to to start that postseason. So again, it could very well be his last start in that in that park in that stadium. And it's just again, it's what you what you love to see from Max Fried. Again, one of my favorite pitchers. I think he's probably going to go down as well. I know the Braves have a long list of great starting pitchers, but for me and what he's done and just the big moments that he's pitched in, I think he's going to be up there. At least just in my mm-hmm. personal just with what he has done for this franchise and again i hope there's much more to come but you could tell it meant a little more and like i said while i wanted him to get that complete game being able to walk off the field like that and get that ovation from the crowd to see him kind of soak it in and and tip his hat to the fans you know that was all uh pretty cool to see uh, from a guy who you know as he said after this is all he's ever known and yeah. he has cer- certainly delivered time and time again for this Braves team. And uh, again, I think he's going to go down as, for me, one of the the more memorable, better pitchers that that I have watched in a Braves uniform. Yeah, in the modern generation, at least, you know, last couple of decades, it's hard to make an argument. There there are too many guys that are ahead of Max Fried with what he's done. And I'm talking the post Maddox, Glavin, Smoltz era. It's a short list anyway. I mean, you could throw Tim Hudson onto that mix, and I'm sure you could find a few other guys. And, you know, everybody – you know, looks and values his stuff differently. But I think, and you brought this up a little bit earlier about him being one of the better pitchers in baseball as well. I think he's been a top 10 starter, at least in the National League, if not all of baseball, for the majority of his career. Once he joined the starting rotation for the Braves, he has been that good. I know the injuries in 2023 had limited him and maybe, you know, kind of had people sleeping on him a bit coming into this year. And I know this hasn't been necessarily at all times the season he's wanted to have, but you look at the body of work, the full resume for Max Fried. He's given a lot to this Braves organization, and uh, they're much better off for having had him than trying to figure out life without Max Fried over the past eight seasons. He's been an integral part of everything they've built. He has. I mean, two top five Cy Young finishes in that 2020 season. He missed a couple of starts at the end. If not, that might have been his chance uh, to win it. He was having an incredible year, but I, it's just because he's not that dominant pitcher that we see a lot in today's game is why I think he gets overlooked. Maybe not so much by Braves fans, but certainly by national media. But I mean, look at the numbers for the guy and what he's done a three, you know, uh, just you know, great numbers in a Braves uniform, a three, one Oh ERA. I mean, that's just, again, it's incredible what he's done in almost 900 innings in a Braves uniform. It's just, uh, he is, and what a great trade, obviously the Braves to go get a kid like that from the Padres in the rebuild kind of kicked that thing off. And here he is. He's seen it through. He's seen a world series. And again, he's pitched in a lot of big moments for this Braves franchise. Yeah. I should definitely thank the Padres for Max Reed. Also thank them for the compensatory pick that became Austin Riley, but that is a different discussion for a different time. Uh, we saw the Braves warm up Joe Jimenez in the eighth. We saw Rice Iglesias obviously have to come in and get that one pitch save in the ninth inning. But Max Freed, I think we all would have loved to have seen him close out that complete game. And he got a little bit of an extra opportunity thanks to Marcelo Zuna's timely stolen base in the ninth inning. The Big Bear took off with two outs, barreling into third base with a head first slide. The throw goes into left field. He's able to scamper home. When you recreate or go back through the ninth inning and look, I don't know that there would have been an opportunity for Max Freed to get an extra hitter and maybe get that extra chance at that complete game had it not been for Marcelo Zuna. And obviously, it wasn't the thing that made it happen, but at least it got him a little bit of extra opportunity, a little bit of extra breathing room, and the Braves ultimately were able to get out of it unscathed. There's something about that third run for me uh, in a game that just kind of makes you feel a little bit more comfortable. You avoid the bloop and blast scenario. Now, as it happened, Freed came back out and got the first two outs, but then did allow a couple of base runners to bring the tying run to the plate. But uh, that third run just feels so big and what's a tight game. And so for Marcel to be able to do that, and uh, Snicker said after the game, they gave him the base. Uh, and I think that was pretty cool as well, his first stolen base of the year. And yeah. uh, again, just heads up. I, I don't know if there's something he saw. Certainly there had to have been something he, he saw for him to take off like that. But it forced the issue. Look, I've been asking for it. I want to see some more stolen bases from this team. I, I thought maybe it would be Michael Harris who got on twice tonight, and he didn't steal. But uh, Ozuna is the guy that's going to bring the speed to, to this team, apparently. You didn't have Marcelo Zuna on your short list no. of Braves no. to be stealing bases. I mean, this is his first one since 2022. And in 2022, those were the only two stolen bases he had in a Braves uniform. Somehow, amazingly, incredibly, he stole 12 bases in his uh, 2019 season with the Cardinals. Uh, Hasn't been quite as plentiful since then. But either way, picked a good time for one. The Braves will take all the runs they can get. That insurance was helpful. And as it turned out, uh, it was um, just adding on to what ultimately was a 3-0 victory. 
Not a lot going on offensively for the Braves. Just four hits, one belonging to Ozzy Albies, one for Jorge Soler, who also walked in this game before departing. Uh, Ramon Laureano had a hit and a run scored, and Sean Murphy, obviously the big one, the two-run homer in the fourth inning. Great to see that from him, his 10th of the year. I don't know what the breakdown of playing time is going to be like for the remainder of the weekend and obviously as they go throughout the playoffs, but we know I think at this point, even with Sean Murphy's struggles, there is value to him and there is value in not wearing one or both of these guys out with he and Travis Darno. And we'll kind of see, you know, who draws the start on any given night for a pitcher that uh, may work well with him. Or as you said earlier, uh, somebody who hasn't worked quite as much with Sean Murphy certainly had a great game with him on the mound or so or behind the plate. So I think it means a lot either way, no matter who is behind the dish as to executing the game plan. You know, both of these guys are, are great behind the the plate, but as I kind of alluded to earlier, both guys have really been struggling offensively uh, over the last month or so. And if that's the case, Sean Murphy is your guy that you went out to get because he can control the running game better because he's great behind the plate defensively blocking baseball is calling a game. And so if both guys are struggling offensively, look, I think Travis Darno probably still gives you the better at bat. Sean Murphy gives you an opportunity for that pot, which the Braves needed on this night. But again, if, if they're even offensively and they're both bad, go with the guy that's really good defensively behind the plate. The guy that you went to go get for that very situation. Yeah, and if they're both healthy, again, it's nice to have options because when the Braves went through 2021, I mean, it's one of the stories, I think, of that club. Travis Darno was gone for a large portion of the season. The Braves essentially had an open tryout behind the plate for what felt like three months. They got Darno back. He caught every inning of every postseason game. Every single pitch belonged to Travis Darno. It was one of the driving forces behind the Braves doing it all, but this time, He could have a little bit of help or vice versa. He could offer a little bit of help for however the Braves want to get it done. And it is going to have to take, I feel like, a group uh, to do this. It's not going to be about any one player on any one night. It's going to take a lot of contributions up and down the lineup through the pitching staff. And obviously, um, that means starters and bullpen. And we'll see how it all plays out. When we come back, we'll talk some about the wild card, the picture that is coming into focus over the course of this weekend, but still, A lot can happen, obviously, between now and not just the weekend, but all the way into Monday's doubleheader as scheduled against the New York Mets. And we'll talk about the return of Reynaldo Lopez, who gets the start for Atlanta on Saturday in Game 2 against Kansas City. That comes your way next on the Braves Postcast. This episode is brought to you by Booking.com. Explore those U.S. cities you've always secretly wanted to learn more about. With hotels, bed and breakfast, vacation rentals, resorts, and so much more on Booking.com, you might just find your perfect stay, even in your baseball rival city during the postseason. Maybe it's time to test your baseball competition's uh, cuisine at their stadium, and luckily on Booking.com, you can find the stadium state that's just right for you. And with Booking.com's wide variety of choice across the U.S., you can go incognito to all those rival cities, and Booking.com can help you book that state that's close to your home team or rival team stadium, giving you all the choice you need. No matter what team you're rooting for, this postseason, Booking.com can make you a fan of any U.S. city. From hotels at Overlook Stadiums to family-friendly resorts, bed and breakfast stays, Booking.com has so many choices across the U.S. The right stay can make you a fan of any U.S. city, even your baseball rivals, Booking.com, Booking.yeah. Let's talk a little bit about what's going on in the wild card for the Braves as they have a chance, as you mentioned earlier, to control their destiny in a different way than maybe they did when those Mets games were on the slate prior to the series ending against the or the season ending series against the Kansas City Royals. Now, this is not the way that anybody would draw it up, having to play a doubleheader on the one scheduled off day between the regular season and the start of the wild card. But As I've said uh, for quite a while on my show, and I know we've talked about it here, the Braves just need to win and and enter the postseason by whatever means necessary. But that means might include a little bit of help from the Brewers against the Mets and some help from the Padres against the Diamondbacks this weekend. Yeah, obviously would be great to get some help because neither one of those games really, or neither one of those teams are necessarily playing for anything at the moment. Their spots are locked up right now, but they're, they're helping the Braves at the moment. Both of those teams are, are winning so would love some help certainly as we talked about though the Braves just got to focus on what they got in front of them and what might give them the biggest help right now is the Orioles they're up seven to nothing on the Twins late and if they win that game the Twins lose the Royals clinch a postseason spot I would assume they're sitting over in the visitors clubhouse watching getting ready to potentially celebrate so that can be a huge boost for the Braves too 
Yeah, I mean, it would be- definitely take away the incentive for the Royals to burn through some of their big starters in advance of the wild card because they've got Seth Lugo lined up to throw in game two of this series. And I believe in game three, it's Cole Reagans. And those are guys that you're going to be looking at to start in the best two out of three series, most certainly. So what would it look like for Kansas City? Should they punch their ticket to the postseason for the remainder of the weekend? Is one of the many stories to watch. Uh, Arizona battling the top wild card seed in the San Diego Padres this weekend. Uh, that series obviously going to be a late one. There'll be a lot of scoreboard watching going on throughout the week. The uh, Central champion Brewers are hosting the New York Mets. They jumped all over Sean Mania in the first inning of that one. And our old friend Reese Hoskins, you know, one of the most popular visiting players in all of Braves country with a grand slam in that first inning. So if the Brewers can figure out a way to beat up on the Mets a little bit this weekend, it, it, there's so many different scenarios of what this Monday doubleheader could look like. And if both games are even necessary, could hinge on the outcome of the next two against Kansas City. And of course, the series happening in Milwaukee between the Brewers and the Mets. A lot going on, a lot of a lot of things. It's uh, uh, you know, that gift where you're you're pointing things out on the the murder board, trying to figure out what exactly is going to happen. But uh, you know, obviously, if the Braves could win all three this weekend, and the Diamondbacks, you know, at least you know lose two of those, then you got a chance to clinch. And Monday's game's not needed. And I think that's best case scenario, really, for the Braves and the Mets. Neither one of those teams want to play on Monday, as you said. That is just an awful situation to have to play those games and then fly out after that to wherever mm-hmm. you're going to be. Uh, so there is the potential for that, but the Raiders, as you said, are going to need some help from some teams who aren't really in it. But obviously, yeah. it looks like the Brewers are helping them out mm-hmm. uh, with this one. And you talked about, we talked about the Royals, obviously, getting help if they clinch. You mentioned Seth Lugo and Cole Reagans. I would imagine that's going to be their game one and game two starters. Those are their two best starters. So if they do clinch, I don't know if those guys still pitch. If they pitch, maybe it's going to be limited innings. Uh, But either way, that seems like it could be a big benefit. Both those guys are already set career innings pitched in a season. So again, I wouldn't imagine the Royals would want to push them too hard. No, not just what, 48 to 72 hours, depending on each day before they would start that wild card series. And I know it might be 72 hours in full for both of them before they would start again. But regardless, nobody wants to be going into the wild card, throwing on three days rest, which brings us to the Braves, who have also gotten into this weekend series with a little bit of TBD when it comes to the rotation. They had Max Freed locked in in game one on Friday. Obviously, that worked out pretty well. Now, Reynaldo Lopez is going to come off the injured list and pitch in game two. Brian Snicker said prior to the game on Friday that Reynaldo threw another side session on Thursday felt great, and you know they don't see any real limitations. Doesn't mean he's going to go out and throw 100 pitches, but they don't feel like this is going to be necessarily a truncated outing for him based purely on pitch count. That certainly is good to hear, but clearly he did not have the opportunity to go out on a full minor league rehab assignment the old-fashioned way, so they're just trying to kind of work him back in there and take it as it comes, and Saturday is going to be the day that he gets back on the mound. But Chris Sale basically on standby for when the Braves either want or need him to pitch based on, I guess, a lot of moving parts, including if they end up in a situation where they're in a must-win game, which could include, I guess, several different scenarios over the course of the Sunday and Monday games. But also there's a little thing called the wild card that I'm sure they'd like to have Chris Sale make a big impact there. Yeah, it's it's a bit of a risky move, I think, for the Braves, one that could definitely pay off if they're able to clinch before that final game against the Mets, then you would have Chris Sale, you know, set to start game one of the wild card, which is what you want. And, you know, by him not pinching essentially on Friday or Saturday, if he does have to pitch in one of those last three games, you've eliminated him from pitching in a potential wild card series. So uh, I, I understand it. And they've talked about it, obviously with Chris Sale and he's more comfortable and just, or he's more comfortable than some of the others of just yes. you know being ready to go whenever called upon. And it's great to have that, you know, bullet in your chamber to call on when you are in an elimination situation to call on Chris sale, but you know, it could backfire to a point where if they do get to the postseason, you don't have one of your best bullets available then, but only in that first series, which obviously is important. But I think that they ended up as much in this situation as any, or for the reasons that they did because of the two games being pushed back, they would have much rather had him thrown on Wednesday and then kind of figured out what needed to happen in order to line him up for the wild card. But they are where they are. What has happened has happened. And all of that, is in yesterday, and the Braves have very much been a day-to-day team, and now they turn their focus to Saturday. It'll be Reynaldo Lopez, who's 8-5 and five with a 203 ERA in 24 starts for the Braves. Been on the IL for just over two weeks. 
thanks to that shoulder inflammation. He is, at the moment, facing Seth Lugo. That's the probable pitcher, but that could change depending on the playoff pictures we talked about in the American League. Let's focus more so on Reynaldo Lopez. I know we talked a little bit about pitch count. Uh, that aside, I think you just want to see, Jake, if you're the Braves, that he's healthy, that he's capable of contributing, and then get him gassed up and ready to go because hopefully he can help you in the postseason off, off of the year he's had and the numbers he's put up. Yeah, he's been outstanding, and it was great to hear and hear him when he was talking about coming back. The fact that he felt great, was ready for whatever the role the Braves needed him in and for them to have the confidence to pitch him in, again, all these games are must win. But uh, to take him off the IL and just throw him right back in there to start in a big game, I, I think that hopefully speaks a lot to where Ronaldo is and how good he feels and how good he's looked in his bullpen session. So obviously, you know, for the Braves to be able to have somebody like him that's had the season he had come back and be able to pitch in a, in a big game like this, uh, again, hopefully will be uh, great for this team. You also have Grant Holmes, I think, to mm -hmm. use behind him if you need to, if there is that kind of situation where maybe he doesn't look quite as sharp early on and you need to pull the plug. I think you have Grant Holmes there in reserve, and obviously you still have some other starters. Rellenbach can, can pitch on Sunday or Morton, and you know Braves have some, some options, which is great this time of year in the biggest games. You have plenty of options for this Braves starting rotation, but certainly looking forward to seeing what Ronaldo can do. Again, he's been so fantastic all year long. If he comes back yeah. out and pitches like anything we've seen this year, it's going to be a big boost for the Braves. Yeah, I would guess if he gets in any significant trouble that you have the Grant Holmes kind of insurance policy there. I would assume, and this is just a guessing game that Charlie Morton throws on Sunday, and you got Spencer Schwellenbach ready to throw in the Monday doubleheader game one. So hopefully you could avoid using Chris Sale. And if you have a best case scenario going on, then maybe game one is the only one you have to play on Monday. But again, there's so many moving parts that we're not going to be able to solve it on this edition of the Braves postcast as we are drawing towards a close. But Ronaldo Lopez will be on the mound against the Kansas City Royals. Seth Lugo, the probable pitcher as of now, as the Braves and Royals will battle it out at Truist Park on Saturday night, a 7.20 p.m. Eastern time first pitch. In game two of their three-game series and a wild, wild weekend for the wild card in both leagues. As uh, also of note, the Detroit Tigers are going to the postseason. And who in the world saw that coming? So if you don't think crazy things can happen over this final, what, 72 or so hours, well, buckle in. We're going to see where this ride takes us. That does, though, bring us to the end of this edition of the Braves Postcast. Make sure you subscribe to Locked On Sports Atlanta on YouTube. Leave us those likes and comments. Share the show with a friend and subscribe to Locked On Braves wherever you get your podcast. Once again, Atlanta behind Max Fried and one of the great performances by their ace left-hander with a 3-0 win over the Royals. We'll be back at you after game two of this series on Saturday. Until then, for Jake Mastriani, I'm Grant McCauley. So long, everyone.